Hello, my name is Patrick. Um, my team and me have created a business model for an idea for Burberry. Um, first of all, our table of content. We're going to talk about the vision, the overview, um, the value proposition, supply chain, the key partners. Um, we're also going to talk about key resources and capabilities, key relationships, uh, the channels of distribution, our target market, the cost structure, the revenue streams. We're going to give a glance at the future, uh, risk management, and we're going to finish with the references. Um, first of all, our vision is that the customer application creates its own design using artificial intelligence based on customer design preferences. Burberry is moving toward, towards becoming the first entirely digital business of the world. A more sustainable supply chain, environmental, social and political responsibility support their mission of becoming a successful luxury brand. Um, the overview over our business model um, at the center of it, obviously, the value proposition. Our app collects preferences and designs from users, processes the information, and intelligently designs Burberry fashion with the help of AI. Final designs will be approved by the CEO and produced by an automated artificial designer for a season. And our key partners for this project are Google and Grow, who already worked with us for the photo booth and the Christmas campaign. Um, YouTube and LinkedIn also will be key partners for this project. Our key activities are to create design for customers, increase sales and also the amount of loyal customers and um, we're gonna get a lot of feedback through this app from our customers. Our key resources are first of all the, the software that we need for this application, then the artificial designer, our CEO, and uh, we are going to use internal expertise and we don't have to hire any external knowledge. Um, on the target market side, our customer relationship, we are trying to increase the amount of loyal customers with these applications. Our channels of distributions are YouTube, Google, Snapchat, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, our fashion shows, obviously our website and different company apps that are already existing. Our customer segments are going to be the United Kingdom, obviously since the flagship store and original store is located in London, Europe, Asia, the Middle East, US. Um, our loyal customers are going to be the target market as well and the average population. Our cost structure is going to be definitely some costs for the software development um, as well as for security and technical support. The revenue streams um, are going to be projected at 7 million pounds and uh, we don't only have monetary revenue streams but we will also get a lot of media exposure which leads to more sales in the future and we are building our brand image because of the key relationships and key partners we have and they are helping us with this project. Um, our value proposition is the app collects preferences and designs from users, processes the information and intelligently designs for a refashion. Final designs will be approved by a CEO and produced by an automated official artificial designer for like for example the summer season or fall season, spring season, any of the four seasons during a year. So the app will collect customer preferences and then makes a certain amount, for example 10 designs for the trench coat and then the CEO will approve um, any of them. Uh, this this value proposition will satisfy the customer's demand for personalized designs. Like everyone, um, the customer always wants to take part in the production or in any kind of, of support to create the end product. Um, 
as well, it will be more convenient for the customers because they can just use their tablet or phone at home, sign into their profile and uh, work with the creation and uh, giving preferences to the app. Um, as well, another important uh, want and need that will be satisfied for the company is that we're going to get a lot of feedback through this app how the customers can imagine the trench codes to look like. Um, our advantages over the competitions, first of all, um, the customer becomes a designer with the help of AI. Like, like I've mentioned before, the customer can um, put up preferences for colors, shapes, anything on their profile and then the artificial um, intelligence app will collect these information and produce a sign of a trench code, for example. We're still using the traditional production process in England and Scotland and therefore we still have the best quality and we will separate ourselves from the customers just with our quality like we've done over the past years. Um, teamwork between customers and the uh, company of Burberry is going to become more engaged and uh, teamwork will always lead to more diversity and more positive results. We still have a cost advantage over the competition because the AI software will replace um, a lot of designers in our department. And um, the last point. Uh, our service will be more technological oriented. It will be a new solution to an existing problem, for example, that uh, customers can uh, take part in the designing process um, because of that app. So apps exist, but the new solution is that the customer has a say in giving active feedback um, in order to produce the end product. Thank you. Well, my name is Yashal Santosh, and now I am going to talk about the importance of our sub key supply chain partners in, in, a, in, in our proposed business plan like in, a make of, uh, like in a making of an application which gives an opportunity to our customers to design what they want. Like we will give them an opportunity, like a customer can tell us that what they want, like the design, the material, the each and everything and we will provide them what they want. So as my or as my team members have already given the uh, um, my or my t team members have already proposed the, our business plan, like in uh, like an application based innovation strategy. As we all know that the Burberry counts as one of the most finest English clothing brands, so we need so like it's an obvious that we need to produce something more innovative, which is much more innovative, which is much more impressive as compared to the other applications, which is available in market by other other luxury brands so as the importance uh, as we all know that the principles of cost reduction and the cost management like a company can earn by its longer relations with the sub with their suppliers like it will help them to gain a flexibility to reduce the cost and to and to making and to make their uh, and to make their suppliers flexible with them in the making of in in the making of the strategy much more innovative and much more creative. So Burberry can use Kashmir wool, their Kashmir wool uh, suppliers in the making of the products like which will give them a Kashmir wool in the lower prices which will give them a more incentive to, to earn higher incentives in the terms of profit, a profit related, uh, related matters. The second one, the Burberry can use their Google partners like Google is already working with Burberry in their technological grounds. So Burberry can extend its coordination, extend its supports, supports to with Google towards application designing and to maintaining to, and to maintain that uh, application to work more effic efficiently, effectively, and to and to make that application available to the other app stores and the mobile smartphone application stores to be easily reachable by each and every customer. So, the next thing. Sorry. Key resources. Was cut there, no? Key resources and the, and the other part is the key resources and the capabilities. Like, 
The first question, do we need to hire external experts or can we use our existing employees to cope up with the new application strategy? Yeah, but we can use the Google, our partner, in making our, making our application much more effective, designing and all. But still, we need a team of an experts, a computer IT professionals, to deal with this application related matters much more effectively. Yeah, we need a good team. We need to hire experts. We need a good team. We need to hire experts. We need a good team. We need to hire experts. Yeah, it's an important basically because if Burberry launch something, the thing must be in a much more clear, much more effective, much more, much, much, much more innovative because it's, it's a Burberry thing. So as Burberry, if the Burberry wants to maintain their prestige, maintain their, maintain their caliber, so they need to produce something much more, much more innovative, much more effective. So the second question, do we need new office space or new equipment? Yeah, it's obvious, like Burberry is a fashion clothing brand. So if we include our technological grounds in our fashion clothing brand, we need to, we need some office equipments, we need new equipments, we need office space. Yeah, we need to provide this because as we all know that the fashion industry is growing rapidly, we need some more things to include in our fashion clothing brand to make our brand alive in the markets and the mindsets of the customers. Like if we want customers to ignore all our brands, all other brands and to choose Burberry, then we need to do something much more extraordinary. So do we need extra resources and raw material? Yeah, as I all, as I said before that, which all other things, we need some extra resources, we need to produce, we need to put some resources, we need to invest more money, we need to pump up more money in this regard to make our brand much more effective, much more alive in the market and the, in the mindsets of the customer. So the last question, how high are the costs are? Extra cost are? Obviously, these all things which will make the cost higher, but as fashion industry is growing rapidly, as the world is changing rapidly, if we want to alive in the mindset of the customer, if we want to alive in the, in the brains of the customer, like if you want customers to ignore all of our brands and to choose Burberry. Thank you, my name is Aman and I'm going to talk about um, the channels and target market. For our uh, business model channels, we will be using uh, the company's uh, own and partnership uh, website and in-store and uh, company's website, uh, initial channels and we also are using um, companies that, which is already using their channel through Google, YouTube, and Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and also for targeting um, new generation, uh, we will uh, use um, Instagram and Snapchat for, for targeting the new generation channels, and um, we will uh, create a new uh, cashback system, 5% uh, cashback will be rewarded to customer uh, if they're buying from uh, the new business uh, apps and uh, already this is a successful idea and uh, Lois DSB and uh, Apple and Uber and Facebook they're doing their partnership business similar um, also um, Burberry we use Burberry's all sorts of network like uh, sales network, all sales network, in-store network, online network, so uh, all, all these sources network we will use um, um, for, for this channel because it doesn't cost uh, any money to the company and the services, 44.9% um, people buying from the website and also the 184.5% um, increasing from the last year so this is a very um, improving sector for this fashion business For the target market, um, um, we will uh, uh, we will create the access and luxury brand to the young generation age 20 to 28 years, and also we will target all, all age group in UK market because the, this is the host country and this is they have a highest level of loyal customer in the in UK, and we will target um, Asia for the young generation because the Asia is 
increasing the technology and the technology development country like India and China will be targeting young generation for this region of this world. And uh, our target is through these apps we will create uh, 3 million users by 3 years and we will adding 7 million uh, pounds to the company's revenue. And year one we will target UK and Asia and Middle East customer. And year two we will um, target US, Australia and rest of the Europe. And year three we will target all over the world, even where the Burberry shop is not exist, but the cut people can buy Burberry product from these uh, apps. And these apps can uh, create a platform for this uh, average people who cannot afford a uh, Burberry product, but this this apps can uh, generate a, a rewarding system which helps uh, to make the cheaper price for the product so average people can buy every product easily. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is Mohit and I'm going to be discussing the target market for Burberry. Um, we are trying to give out accessible and luxury products for the young generation which is around 20 year old to 28 year old which covers the whole world except um, the age groups um, in UK and Europe which are trying to conquer all the age groups available and the app we are trying to make is BFHD as mentioned before we are trying to cover up as what we have estimated is around 3 million users in 3 years adding up to 7 million pounds of revenue to the company's account the first year which we are trying to conquer is UK, Middle East and Asia UK because um, that's the home where Burberry belongs to and Middle East is the place which connects the west to the east and then Asia which is a very large market but if we start initiating that in the first year I think it will be easy for us and the second year we are trying to conquer the western United States which is again a massive market but we again want to spread out slowly around and not be really quick in trying to conquer the places then we go around for Australia and Europe and in year three where you know there are many countries out there where Burberry does not have a store like you know the smaller countries around where we would again like our customers out there to make purchases from our company and we'll be trying to conquer that part of the world where there's no Burberry, sh Burberry shop and average population who's not able to afford the usual luxury products. Now for example Burberry is a very luxurious brand and there are, there are people out there who cannot afford Burberry at all. We, you know many people out there who cannot afford Burberry at all. So but introducing the reward system which can lead to cheap and luxury products, we can offer the people who can't afford Burberry to afford Burberry and get them to the reward points or other systems. Now we talk about the cost structure. Um, this, this is the MS Excel sheet where I um, decided the cost structure. I'm sorry for that. Um, where I decided the cost structure. Um, the first thing, which is the main part, is the software development, which is the most costliest part of um, the cost which we are spending over. Um, this is around £320,000, which is a one-time payment, so we just need to pay it once, which covers up you know, um, the development of software, and we don't need to spend any other money in developing the software. But we have other things which require the software to be running perfectly, which is software security, but we need to make sure that it is not used by hackers or you know, viruses don't attack the software. We're spending around £24,000 um, on a yearly basis. The technical support, which is providing support to the application in technical manners, is going to cover £36,000. Software maintenance covers again £24,000. And upgrading software, there are many chances we have bug fixes in the software, and you know, sometimes the software starts crashing and people can't use it on their phones and the iPads and phones. So we have the software upgrade system, which costs around £18,000. Salaries, now for example, um, this is around £96,000. Considering we use around um, two or three um, software developers for the brand, for the application, you can say that the average payment, average yearly payment for salary of a software developer is around £30,000. So if we use around three software developers to this process, it adds up around £32,000 per person, which sums up around £96,000. And marketing, this is again um, a variable cost which can really differ, but for the annual year, as we have set this out, we start with around £120,000 for marketing purposes, which is spreading the news of the application and bringing it into, into awareness for people to start using it. And I mentioned right here how um, we are using software development, which will just be one-time cost, and other costs like security, support, maintenance, and upgrade have an annual budget, and the variable cost again, which comes as marketing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ify. I'm here to talk about the revenue stream. 
So first of all, how is Bulgari going to make this money? How are we capturing um, value by advertising and leads? So we're talking about digital advertising. Digital advertising, what are the advantages? It is faster, it has a wider reach, it is more convenient, especially for the customers. And also we're talking about leads. In terms of leads, we're talking about partnership, collaborations with other firms, Google in particular, for sale, and all of this. Advantages of this, it could be cost effective um, and the different firms get to participate in their area of specialization. Burberry is known for its clothing and Google is known for technology and all of that. So Burberry doesn't need to invest too much capital and in making wristwatches. Rather, when it can partner with a company that is already doing that and share the risk equally or share the risk however it has been said. Also, well, how much is Bulberry going to make from all of this? How much is going to be, what would it cost Bulberry? How much are they going to make in terms of profit and all customer base? And as estimated, we're saying three million for advertising. Why? Adverts have a wider reach and we are saying most of Bulberry's customers are already loyal customers that with or without adverts, they are still going to buy. Or Bulberry, like my colleague said earlier, is trying to reach the other parts of the world where Bulberry is not yet. And we're also trying to capture more people and also make more money for Bulberry. Through the lease, we are estimating more money through the lease because wristwatches are going to be made. Also, we're going to have a fashion app. So we're saying this part of the value capture can rake in more money for Bulberry. Six million has been estimated. We're saying so if these wristwatches are made, more money could be made. More of these customers, after buying the clothing, can also buy the wristwatches and also the apps will be used. Secondly, what of um, Bulberry's market value, um, revenue from gotten from the London Stock Exchange. As said here, revenue as at 2015 was estimated at 2,523 million. The earnings per share is 76 pounds and the dividend per share is 32.90p. So, Bulberry um, is unique. In terms of competition, Bulberry stands out. And we're not saying there are no competition, but Bulberry is a um, fashion brand that is known for its trend codes and this has worked for Bulberry. Other fashion brands have tried to copy, other fashion brands have tried to compete, but still Bulberry stands out because of its, its doing things the same way it is retaining its roots, its British heritage. That's one of the reasons why Bulberry is standing out in the fashion world today. The reason why Bulberry is in, in all of this Profits is one of the main reasons for business and so that is one of the reasons why Bulberry is doing the, the advantages of um, the app to Bulberry. Profits is one of them. Also, it will make it more accessible to more customers despite the fact that we have loyal customers but we are going to get more customers by this app. So, we're talking about the glance of the future for Bulberry. What does the future hold for Bulberry? What does the future hold for Bulberry? What is it going to be like for Bulgari in the next 10 years, 20 years? So we're here trying to project, we're saying we're going to make artificial coffee machines. This would replace some workers. These coffee machines would not need too many people to function and to be in the Bulgari shops. And this would work. Customers come in and they need a cup of coffee. It's so cold out there, they can get the coffee. Um, we're talking about our fashion model that we talked about with my colleague B4HD. This is an app that customers can make use of and they can decide the app has its own characteristics, what it can do for the customer. Bulberry works with Microsoft or Google, Bulberry works with Fossil. Like I said earlier, Bulberry is going to be partnering with all of these people to make sure that it brings, it moves forward in the fashion industry and we do not stay where we are. We're trying to move forward with the fashion industry. Um, so what are the advantages of um, this artificial intelligence? Jobs are going to be done fast on time. Jobs are going to be done faster. Artificial intelligence saves cost of labor. 
is going to need less workers apart from the initial installation and apart from the initial cost of acquiring the um, equipment and all of that but less workers are going to be working and labor is going to be reduced the cost of labor is going to be reduced really really down for Burberry um, the future what would Burberry do in the future we may not know all of this but for now we're saying maybe a social media app something or Burberry they have the capital Burberry could partner collaborate it could be a merger it could be an acquisition with maybe a phone or a car company and Burberry can do this in the nearest future thank you hello my name is Keith and I will be discussing Burberry's risk management um, and the factors that will influence the usage of this application. We believe that this application will raise the cognitive perception of our customers. The reason is because it requires the engagement and interaction with our artificial intelligence software. Another factor that will influence the purchase of this application is the peer pressure from society. This will increase the amount of users using the app. Burberry's future goal is to go completely digital. This will be easy for them because the main population is the Asian market and they are crazy about technology. Their customers are 20 years younger on average and more familiar with digital media. This has helped lead Burberry to become more innovative. A factor that will be a risk for Burberry is the threat of their companies trying to duplicate this software. In order to guard this application, they will need to get licenses and patents on their software to protect them in court. Another risk for Burberry is the security of this software. They will need to prevent people from being able to steal information and hack into their systems. On the next slide, we will be discussing uh, competitor orientation. This will be a radical innovation for Burberry, so it will set them further apart from their competition in their quest to go completely digital. As for customer orientation, this app promotes customer engagement. Society is very dependent on their mobile phones, so we expect a lot of in, uh, interaction from them. This app will be the newest on the market and there is nothing like it. The benefits of creating this application outweigh the risk. The expenses of creating and maintaining it will be affordable. It will give Burberry tremendous media exposure. Burberry may also sell this artificial um, software to other companies. Uh, and gain even bigger profit and advantage. Hi, my name is Mohit again, and I'm right out here to conclude this presentation you have seen now. Uh, we're talking about the application we're making, and we're hoping that once it becomes a big success, it's, be it's going to become a huge step for Burberry to achieve its um, goal, which is trying to conquer the world market against its competition, even though it considers that they do not have any competition. But yeah, it, it does matter. and. Uh, it, do, it does get great exposure through um, cooperation with Google because Google is one of the world's, I think, the world's biggest technological company out there and working alongside them to develop softwares and applications is a huge standard for the company, the bar which we have set and I hope that other companies out there will be taking inspiration from us and trying to chase the same goal. And the supply chain, we're trying to pro provide the products with is efficient again, we're trying to be cost effective but we're not trying to um, decrease the quality of the products by any way so all we're doing is by using the existing suppliers, we're trying to maintain the cost and just keep it the most effective as possible. The target market, as I discussed earlier, um, is any great age group available in the UK and the Europe and the age group of 20 year olds to 28 year olds around the world, which is the rest of the world other than UK and Europe. And we're also conquering, trying to conquer the countries where Burberry does not exist as there are many countries out there where Burberry does not have, they do not operate and they do not have stores out there. But there are people out in those countries that they want to purchase um, products from our company, so we'll try to conquer that market as well. And again, the cost structure, which I told, told you about earlier, where we had the Excel sheet, which um, sums up around £638,000, which is a massive amount. But this also um, includes the amount of developing the software, which is around £320,000. 
So if you remove the 320,000 pounds, the remaining is around 318,000 pounds. So 320,000 pounds is just a one-time cost which we spend just once with a lifetime to develop the software, which we're not going to do it again. But the remaining 318,000 pounds is an it's an approximate of what we're going to be spending on an annual basis to make sure that the software runs smoothly. And the future of the AI, you know, artificial intelligence does have a future. It does not end where we are today. And considering Burberry in this matter, we are hoping that it also has artificially intelligent coffee machines and cleaning machines which clean up the floors by itself and provide coffee to the customers out there without the help of any workers. Like I know the coffee machines out there are really working out. You just put a coin and you get a coffee. But these coffee machines will also be having a cleaning machine in them whereas it detects um, dirty floors or spilled coffees or anything out there which um, does not require workers and will clean up the floor by itself. And risk management which is again is a huge factor because you just can't take any big step for, for a massive company and not make sure what is the risk management about this because you do need to have a backup and what we have decided as a company is that risk management needs a lot of interaction with customers. We need our customers to tell us where we are going wrong, what we are doing wrong and what we can do to make to enhance the experience to make it much better and also there is a high chance of counterfeits being made for the application like people duplicating the software trying to make an app for the same company for themselves which is again a legal issue but we have decided to make a copyright of the software over there and I'd like to conclude my presentation now. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone.